Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be going over FuelTech's two-step and three-step launch control. Stay tuned. All right, so you have your drag racing car and you need to set up a rev limiter launch control to um, launch the vehicle at a consistent RPM. So in the FuelTech, you have under map options, you have two rev limiters for a total of three. So you have the main engine rev limiter, you have the two step rev limiter, and then the three step rev limiter. So there's three different uh, rev limit options that you can use. And I'll start from the top. Um, in the three step mode, it's typically used for turbocharge of combinations to build boost, get the RPM that's you know a little bit higher than their launch target, and build enough boost, you know, to get to whatever target they want to get to. So the higher you rev the motor, the easier it is to build uh, boost. So usually this function is turned on, and it doesn't take up an additional input unless for some reason you need to add a a button for it for I don't know why you would need to but with just the two-step wired in as an input or however you have the two-step input set up the three-step is automatically on when the two-step is activated so in this example here it's on auto on so when the two-step is on when the two-step is activated, the three-step automatically turns on. And in this example we have, it's set to 4,500 RPM, and then it's gonna turn off at 15 pounds of boost. And so here it's it hits 4,500, it's about 46, it's overshooting just a little bit. And it stays on the three-step and here's the indicator marks right there. So here's the three step and it's about 4,500 RPM. You see over here on the top left. And then it steps down once it hits about 15 pounds of boost right in here and drops back down to 4,300 or so. I think the log shows it to be at 4,200 RPM. And so this is how you set it up in the FT Manager software. You have the option for timing table for rev launch, or you can do just a fixed uh, timing number. Usually guys with turbo cars want a timing table, and it is a completely separate table that does that is not the main spark table. So here you can add your timing and as it starts building boost, drop it down. You know, whatever you need to do in here to, to get it to build boost and hit your target. Um, launch RPM and launch boost quickly. And some options in the two-step rev limiter is high, resolu high resolution ignition retard. So it'll pull this much, this much ignition timing from the main or the two-step timing table for rev launch. So it'll pull up to 15 degrees. So, And then on the three-step, it doesn't have that option. You do have an option for fuel enrichment. Uh, and then you have minimum TPS for activation. So it has to see, in this instance, 45% throttle throttle position and um, it does have an additional 20% of fuel added on the two-step as well so this so three-step after validated launch is basically once the three-step is on it won't come back on until after 10 seconds or after it goes above 5,000 rpm 
So if you accidentally press the button down the track or it accidentally gets activated, it won't activate the three-step again. And then the options on the two-step rev limiter, you know, you have some high resolution, retard. Um, I do have the advanced setting turned on on this one. Retard on two steps. So this is how much retard it's going to apply. So you're giving it 15 degrees of retard and it's going to apply the 15 degrees total when it's at the max progression range. So let's say you're targeting 4,000 and it hits, um, I mean, sorry, 4,200. When the RPM is above 4,200, so let's say 4,400, then it's going to apply 90% of this 15 degrees of retard. And then it's, if it's below it, no, I think it's, a, yeah, it says above. So when it's at 4,400, it's going to remove all 15 degrees of timing. And for the ignition cut, same thing. It's going to apply 90% cut when it's at 4,400 RPM. So you could tighten this down, set it to 50, and then this cut would be a lot more aggressive. Again, this is under advanced setting. If you don't have advanced settings, this option is not there. Uh, input activation for two-step. You can do uh, an input, a wide input. You do it by speed, which doesn't take an input. But there's going to be a delay when you disable it. So as soon as you the car starts to roll out, it's going to have to see a certain mile an hour or else it's going to ride the two-step for however long. So you can set it by speed and you set it the minimum is one mile an hour. So it's going to there's going to be a delay if you want it to deactivate quickly. It's better off of a button. An input sensor. Any of these inputs here can set it. If you're already using a brake switch and you like all the brake switch, you can set it that way as well. So these are uh, FT can if you got one of those switch panels. That's an option as well. Nano Pro, I think, has an option for a two step button on there as well. But yeah, if you guys got any questions, oh, two step activation mode. Uh, activated by zero volts, that means the input has to see a ground. So if you just have it switch straight to battery ground or chassis ground, as soon as it sees the ground, it's going to activate. And then 12 volts, it has to see the signal come up to 12 volts, so it's going to go low to high. And then when it comes back down the low, it's going to deactivate.